Right, let's get some paint on the Universal Carrier. No. <laughs> to another edition of the Scale Model Club. Uh, on, in this edition we're going to be weathering and doing a few little bits and pieces to finish off the uh, Universal Carrier. So, let's speed this up a bit so we don't all have to be bored with me painting lots of little bits. We've all seen me paint stuff before. This is uh, the olive green colour that I used to paint the rest of the vehicle with and I'm going to get the wheels done the tracks done and some weathering and some dirt underneath the tracks. Uh, standard as usual in my uh, Harder and Steenbeck Ultra. It's a 0.2 needle and it's on 1.2 bars pressure. Had a few problems with it this time round. I think it's my own fault being lazy and not cleaning it out enough. But it came out okay. Hope everybody's keeping well, staying indoors, doing lots of modelling. Keep calm, do models. Right, so, next thing is to give the whole thing, because you're happy with the colours, happy with the green modulation and happy with the wheels, you give everything a coat of clear. This is Tamiya XF's 22. No, not XF, it's just X22 because it's it's not flat. Give it a good coat all over so it's nice and shiny, ready for the decals, ready for the weathering, ready for the washers. Give the um, figures a wash too. Sorry, give the figures a clear coat too, so that they're ready for the wash. The underside, the sides. I could do, do the inside first because it's quite delicate and there's lots of tiny little places you need to get the airbrush in without getting a run. So that's the body done, the figures done. Let's clean out this airbrush, camera on with a bit more. Alright, so uh, once they've been um, clear coated, and I've put the military shader wash over them from oh, Army Painter Models, uh, I'm now going to get a little bit of the flesh colour on my brush and then wipe most of it off and then dry brush the faces because I thought they were a little bit on the dark side. A little bit too much on there so I'll just wipe it over with the old combo. Um, basically what it does is it highlights all the top areas and uh, leaves the dirt in the areas that uh, need to have dirt in. Makes them look a little bit more human. It's quite a long video this one because uh, there was quite a lot to do uh, and I need to get on with the whole project on the next video. Thanks very much everybody for your uh, support in subscribing. Uh, make sure anyone new to the channel subscribes. Ding the old bell for the uh, notifications. Glad to have you with us. So. 
Next up, this is um, Wet Mud from AK Interactive Models and it's a dark brown wash. And I'm just going to paint that along the bottom where you get all the mud and stuff. Leave it a little bit wet. Uh, same for the other side. Dab that on. Now the next thing I want to use is European Earth, which is a pigment. I need to just put some white spirit in a bowl because this is an enamel wash. I need that to clean the brush. Need to get myself some of the brushes obviously when we're back allowed out of our houses again. So I've got a, a bright brush now and I'm just going to try and move the wash around. You can do that when it's been clear coated and it just you know, you get yourself some little streaks and runs, and this is the European pigment. Now, putting the European pigment on now sticks to that and gives it a dusty look. So, you just chuck it on and sort of dab it about and let it fall where it falls, and it, it sticks. You'll see the effect when it dries, it looks just like European mud. it's drying you can move it about a little bit uh, this is the first time I've used this it came with the kit um, not a hundred percent sure how to use it oh, watched a couple of videos but uh, I, I was very pleased with the result um, I think the other side I tried with decal fix being a pigment fixer which works quite well to be fair so you paint that on first where you want it and then you stick this sort of pigment to it and let it dry This is obviously just for the underside of the uh, tracked areas. Uh, the rest of the uh, vehicle will be painted with a brown wash for green vehicles by Baker Interactive. Let's dip a few more little bits of wet mud in there. The only thing I did do is I forgot to put the transfers on. You really need to put the decals on first before you do the weathering because you need the decals to look a little bit weathered. And all I ended up doing was um, putting the putting a little bit weathering around the decals once I'd got them on. So it wasn't a, but it's just easier if you put the decals on first and then start weathering your vehicle. I didn't speed this bit up because I thought you'd all be quite interested to see how we get on with putting mud and stuff on the bottom of the vehicle. This is what half of modelling is all about, trying new things, seeing what they do. Trying to get the effects you like, different brushes and techniques.
it is also very messy as you can see there's a lot of pigment goes on the floor It's, uh, you can just wash your brushes in either white spirit or water for the pigments. I don't think it's anything in particular. I must have a look and see. Doesn't say, it just says pigment, which is like a powder. So now the next thing to do is put it all over the um, cockpit where people have been getting in and out and on the seats and dust up the inside there, really make it look like we've got dust in all the nooks and crannies before I put the driver and the cockpit together. Gonna knock something over in a minute, you wait, there you go, put the lid on. That'll go on the bloopers reel. Right, so we've seen me do it all, so let's speed this up a bit. Same process. All we're going to do this time is put the dark wash on, wipe all the areas off to leave the dark wash in all the nooks and crannies. Right, so that is the dark brown wash for green vehicles all over the top side and I've wiped it off with the cotton bud just to give it a streaky dirty feel to it. Next up, like I said, we're going to grab the uh, pigment again which is earth and put it all inside, all where the feet go, where people would step on something and this is onto the semi-wet wash that I've literally just put on so it'll stick in all the areas that I want it to stick in. The nice thing about this stuff is if it does if you can get it to stick in with the old pigment fixer, when it dries, it dries in like a dusty look. It really did look good.
So there we go, just fishing, finishing off, dusting the pigment around. Looks pretty filthy, covered in dirt, sand, mud, European earth. And we're just going to dust all over, give the whole thing it's like a little bit of a dry brush, clean the brush. Move on to the next stage, which is actually sticking everything in with glue, driver, dashboard. Now this is for the men themselves. They've been given a clear coat, the X22 again, and this is now going to give them a wash with a mil army painter's military shade wash you can't really see it on camera well, you might be able to but it basically as you see darkens everything down pulls in all the right areas makes the bits of the uniform stand out and I'll leave this at a normal pace for you all to watch because I don't think you saw it on the infantry video So that's the main wash. The next stage would be to get some flat earth, which is the colour of their uniforms, and just dry brush them all over, bring all the highlights out. So, there's the effect of the mud after I put the wheels on. Very pleased with that. Now next up is gluing the driver in and the dashboard in and the bonnet on and that will pretty much be the vehicle finished. Just got to paint the driver's boots because I realised I hadn't painted the driver's boots. And I had a horrible feeling that as soon as he's kneeling down you might be able to see them. Should just cut his legs off. Nice, so. It's been clear coated, painted, weathered, and now we've painted the wheels separately, the olive green in the middle, and painted the black tyres on. And there you can see how much it looks like a dirty bottom. Giggly. And uh, 
we'll just place the guide wheel on to start with and then put these uh, bogies on. They can only go on one way, so to keep an eye on the holes, you can't get it wrong. You have to put them on and let them dry and just just before they go off so give it 10 minutes and then just sit it on the deck just to make sure that all your wheels are, are level and then pick it back up and let it sit on the paint pot until it's dry yeah put it back on the paint pot let that dry See if we can get this dashboard in, I think. Because the driver is actually kneeling with his hands over the front of the vehicle as if he's uh, waiting for something. I found the bonnet and the front bulkhead very awkward to fit. I don't know if it's the only thing that was awkward to fit. I don't know if it is just awkward to fit or I fitted them in the wrong order because I didn't look at the instructions. I've got everything painted and on the on the bench. So I may have fitted them in the wrong order, but I did find those particularly awkward. just going to mention that the glue doesn't like sticking to painted surfaces so the best thing to do with the two surfaces that if they have got paint is just to scrape the paint off give it a little bit of a sand and then glue the two together otherwise it can make an awful mess and it won't stick Front bulkhead, bonnet, driver, all stuck in. I've got the caps of the two people because I've put berets on the guys with the tank. I've got a captain and the driver. So. Next up, is the decals. I did a quick little decal bit. Uh, that's warm water. Because uh, I, 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 I put most of them on, but I left one just to show you in case new people are watching this particular video. So that's warm water. 
cut your decal out with your knife being careful not to cut your fingers now you need to hold the decal with some tweezers that work opposite so that when you let go of them they shut rather than open they must have a proper name I'll have to google that um, you grab hold of the decal without the tweezers touching the actual decal just holding the paper dip it in the warm water for 15 to 20 seconds set it on I'd be I usually have a bit of tissue there but I've got let it on a little bit of tissue and this is mark fit which is from Tamiya uh, this is my new decal solution I'm using now you just wait until you can move the decal around on the paper you'll be able to because you can hold the paper put your paintbrush on the decal like that give it a bit of a move and if it moves you're ready to paint it takes a bit of time takes about another 10 or 15 seconds to sort out some decals are better than others and once it's ready to go you paint your mark fit onto the vehicle in the space that you want your decal to go on and just slide your decal off the backing paper onto the mark fit on the vehicle and then you want to paint some mark fit over the top of it and then mop up the excess decal solution with a cotton bud there's lots of other decal solutions out there's decal fix works quite nicely although you don't want to use decal fix on top of Tamiya paint because it'll ruin it so make sure that you always do a clear coat before you start putting the decals on it's also microset microsol I think Revel do one not sure what it is so yeah so paint that in the area as you can see that just pulls and what it does is it softens the decal and sucks it into the surface so you slide your decal off onto where you want it get rid of the bit of paper and you can now you can still move that around to get that just in the right place I'm gonna leave it because it's where I want it and now you just mop up the excess with your cotton bud a little bit on the top of the decal that helps it sit right down and now you just use the uh, cotton bud to mop up the bits where the paint holds if you leave it on the painted surface it can stain oops and that's the decalin might do a tutorial video on decalin so we all know how to do that properly now this stuff this is brilliant this is another pigment and it is called gunmetal from um, MIG ammo ammo MIG you dip it on dip your cotton bud in there and wipe it on a black you paint it black first and wipe it on and it basically gives you lovely little silver edges gives it a metal effect um, you can do it on helmets to give them a bit of a shine you can put them on I put those on the springs gives them a bit of a shine and you can also if you paint the weapons a matte black color you can then wipe that over the top and it gives them like a metal look like a metal sheen this is the last bit of painting which is the bag that's holding the camo netting I'm gonna paint that a khaki color I've also got a tarp to go on the back there but I've not finished painting that that'll be done in the same way bit of khaki bit of wash and I'll stick it on this is just the gold some nice gold leaf and all I used that for was the cat badge so look out for that in the photographs little dab on the front makes it look like he's got a nice gold cap badge there's the infantry there look lying around doing nothing careful so we've just got basically just got the tracks and a little bit of 
dirty weathering to put on the outside and we're all done. I painted the tracks in a that colour there is dark iron which is like a matte black with like a greeny finish but it's not silver so it's a bit like gunmetal but without the silver and I like that put that on and then use your dry brush over the top of those in silver and it gives you a nice little metal look where the edges are shiny I usually do it in the box because it's quite messy doing these This is a bit of decal fix, uh, and this is I'm using it for a glue for some more pigment, and the pigment is just literally to stick on the wheels. So I put it on the wheels, and I assume that because the wheels are going round, it would have crushed some of the mud. So you paint it on, it turns it into a liquid. It just gives it like a, a dirt wash almost, but it's a nice effect does look good all over the wheels it just looks like they're a bit dirty, a bit grubby, they've been running through the dirt the only thing I haven't done looking at the model at the moment is I need to run the same stuff over the tracks so that the tracks look like they've also been through the mud I'll speed this up because we all know how it's no different to the uh, to the way I put the pigment on on the inside the only difference is where I've put a little bit of that decal fix on, it's got wet. So it's pulled and run around a bit more, rather than just sticking. And when it goes off, it goes off and, it, and you get, uh, it goes off and leaves it in a powdery look. So lovely that's it weathered driver on I think I've even got his cap on there so so here we are yeah this is the finished article I've, I've used some of the uh, bags from the last job and from this modern kit stuck them on the side to make it look like they've hung their stowage everywhere over the side put the rope on the front not quite sure what else to do with that because it looks a bit white uh, and we have our infantry that's from the last video and join me in the next video when we attempt to build a little bit of a diorama for them all to go on so make sure you like subscribe push the notification button and I'll join you next time for some mud and grass stay safe everyone Right.